like to stand and join us for the first song. And today, I'm going to warn you for the second one, you got to move.
Welcome. Welcome to Hancock United Methodist Church, a place of love and grace, of hope and perseverance. God invites all of us to be part of the beloved community. God invites all of us to share in the good news. If you are worshiping with us from home this morning, please let us know by dropping a comment or hitting one of the emoji buttons. For those of us in the sanctuary, we will have an extended time to greet each other following our worship service today. Let us now prepare our hearts for worship. Please join me in the call to worship. We come here shouting, our voices lifted in praise. We come here singing, our songs full of joy. We come here dancing, our hearts rejoicing. To the Holy One who is worthy, all praise and glory forevermore. Let us pray. Lord of the dance, creator of whirling winds and shimmering flames, move in us this day. Breathe life into our songs of praise. Set our hearts ablaze to your word. May our worship bring joy to you, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. One generation shall extol your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. They will recount the glorious splendor of your majesty, and on your wondrous works I will meditate. They will proclaim the might of your awesome deeds, and I will declare your greatness. They shall celebrate the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord is good to all, and his compassion is over all that he has made. All your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power, to make known all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your king. This ends our reading from Psalms 145. Please stand as you are able and sing, Praise ye the Lord. The words are on the screen. All right, good morning, everybody. I'd like the children to come forward. Please watch the cord.
judging them all the time. <laughs> Our second reading is again from the Old Testament. Turn it on. Our second reading is again from the Old Testament. Please turn in your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter 6, beginning with verse 1. David again gathered all the chosen men of Israel, 30,000. David and all the people with him set out and went to Baal, Judah, to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who is enthroned on the cherubim. They carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God, and Ahio went in front of the ark. David and all the house of Israel were dancing before the Lord with all their might, with songs of lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the house of Obed Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he sacrificed an ox and a fatted cow. David danced before the Lord with all his might. David was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel, Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting and with the sound of the trumpet. As the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, daughter of Saul, looked out of the window and saw King David leaping and dancing before the Lord, and she despised him in her heart. They brought in the ark of the Lord and set it in its place, inside the tent that David had pitched for it, and David offered burnt offerings and offerings of well-being before the Lord. When David had finished offering the burnt offerings and the offerings of well-being, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts and distributed food among all the people. The whole multitude of Israel, both men and women, to each a cake, a portion of meat, and a cake of raisins. Then all the people went back to their homes. For the word of God in scripture, the word of God among us, the word of God within us. Thanks be to God. We now invite the children to come forward. <laughs> singing up on that stage, except there was one runner, and it wasn't even a little one, it was a big one. <laughs> uh, I was talking about you, Haley. <laughs> All right. <laughs> don't be giving eyes to your brother, and don't roll the nail. So, this morning, Miss Gabriel's not going to lie, she had one of those long weeks, I mean, a long day, and I'm like, i gotta, I got to come up with something that's calling this to me. And then I reread our first set of verses. And I was like, wow, this is all about giving God that praise. And then, this is going to sound funny, but the adults might follow me a little, so I apologize if I get on one of these. When I was in high school, many, many moons ago, a song came out that says, I want to talk about me by Toby Keith, okay? Now, he sang this song. He was like, I'm going to talk about everything. I'm going to talk about everything. I'm going to talk about everything. Oh, girl, I love you so much. Let's talk all about you. Let's just keep it up. But the funny thing is, you don't always want to talk about just yourself. Every once in a while, the guy, poor Toby, wanted some of the attention for himself. And I got to thinking this morning, God is really quite much like Toby, or maybe Toby was a little flavor of God in this moment. Do you guys love to talk about your days? Do we love as your parents to boast you up and talk about all the amazing things that you do? It's what Facebook feeds are filled with, Miss Anaya. <laughs> it's what they're filled with. It's pictures of you guys at magical moments in your lives. It's who got an A. It's who sat well in class. For the little guys, it's who finally said their first word. They took their first steps. They rode their first bike. 
And those are great. But sometimes then we forget that we're supposed to be giving that greaterness to God. Every once in a while, he would like it if you just talk about him. He's putting you all of that ability because he loves everything about you. Girlfriend, you won't flip. Anaya, thank you, gorgeous. Every once in a while, he wants you to put a pause on you, though. Talk about me. Talk about I. Talk about everything that is me. Give praise to me. Give glory to me. I gave you the ability to do it. Now pause on you and give on me. Do you think in your busy days, even my littlest ones, you can give praise to God? Could you thank him for what he's done? What is something that you could thank him for, birthday boy? Too much on the spot? Bobby, come here. What could you thank God for? Sit down, sit, sit right here, because you're hitting Caroline, and we Caroline. don't want to hit our friends. What could you thank God for? Could you, what do you think you might thank him for? How about we do it? Who would thank for their parents? Mm -hmm. Who would thank them for the trees outside that give us air? Mm -hmm. Who would thank him for the food that's on our table? Who would thank him for giving up his only son? <laughs> so that you have that choice. Who would thank him for the hard days as well as the good days? So you at this age, all the way up to this middle schooler over here. Oh, that's right, I get to pick on you with that. All right, you're going into the big building. <laughs> all of you are finally getting to be old enough to not just think about me, not just think about I, you're getting old enough to really think about what it is that God is doing for you and through you. And you're at the age now where moms and dads and, you know, even Pat, we shouldn't always have to go, Psst, can you say your prayers? Psst, could you do this? You're becoming old enough to start knowing that it's time to flip that card and give it to God. So can I ask a favor? This week especially, because Miss G's back on Sunday again, I'm getting back in my normal routine. If I ask you if you remember to give thanks to God on Sunday, are you going to be able to tell me that you did? You think so? That's my challenge. I'm going to pick on you on Sunday, and I want to know who gave it back to God this week. Can we do it? My older ones nod for me because the little ones are being real cute. Okay. There we go. All right. Take your cute selves to your seat. As many of you know, we kicked off Camp Joy last week, and I'm not preaching today. So it is a joy to have Steve Van Meter bring the message today. Steve reached out to me in May when we were talking about having the preaching class from pew to pulpit. And he expressed an interest and a desire into bringing God's word to you. So I'm excited that Steve is gonna bring the word today. And this is his first, first message with our congregation. So I invite you to hear what God has to say today. Good morning, church. Good morning. How are we doing today? <clears throat> today, as we gather in the presence of the Lord, let us delve deeper into the profound lessons found within 2 Samuel. This script, <clears throat> in this scripture, we witness a pivotal moment in the history of Israel, one that teaches us the invaluable truths about reverence, obedience, and the holiness of God. King David a man after God's own heart endeavors to bring the Ark of God, the sacred vessel representing his divine presence, to Jerusalem. With 30,000 chosen men of Israel by his side, David embarks on the sacred mission. 
yet, <clears throat> filled with the in, uh, yet amidst the jubilation, tragedy strikes. As the ark is placed upon a new cart and the procession begins, the unexpected occurs. Uzzah, one of the sons of Abinadab, reaches out to steady the ark as the oxen stumble, seemingly acting out of concern for its safety. <laughs> However, in that moment, the Lord's anger is kindled against Uzzah, and he is struck down for his irreverent act. Let me take a moment there. How many times have you been walking through your house and you accidentally knock something off the counter? Oh! And that's what that moment was. But, we look at it and we see that the passage uh, is a poignant reminder of the holiness and reverence. That we must maintain in our worship and service to God, despite David's good intentions and the festive atmosphere surrounding the procession, the Lord's commandments regarding the handling of the ark were clear. Only the Levites, appointed by God, were to carry the ark using poles inserted through the rings on its sides, never to be touched directly. In reflecting on this passage from 2 Samuel, I am drawn to the parallels in the popular movie Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark, so that explains the outfit today. <laughs> now, while this is a work of fiction, the film vividly portrays the reverence and awe surrounding the Ark of the Covenant. Even in the realm of fiction, the characters understood the immense power and the sanctity of the Ark, recognizing that it was not to be trifled with or treated lightly. From this, we learn that good intentions alone are not enough to justify disobedience to God's commandments. It is a sobering reminder that our worship, though filled with joy and celebration, must always be rooted in reverence and obedience to His Word. Furthermore, this passage, <clears throat> this passage underscores the importance of understanding and respecting the holiness of God. The ark symbolized his presence amongst his people, and any irreverence towards it was seen as a direct affront to his divine majesty. In our own lives, we must always strive to honor God's holiness, recognizing he is worthy of our utmost respect and devotion. As we reflect on this passage, let us examine our own hearts and actions. Are we approaching God with reverence and obedience that he deserves? Are we seeking his presence with pure hearts and sincere devotion? Let us take heed of the lessons from David's experience and strive to worship God in spirit and in truth, with reverence and all. Now, thinking about the lessons, I think about working on cars. Certainly, the risk here isn't as high as touching the ark. Most recently, I was working on my brother's car, and I did not follow the YouTube directions. Uh, I'm, I'm sure Levi here can tell you I, I get a little ahead of myself sometimes. <laughs> but there's the sensor on there, and as I'm trying to work on it, I see the sensor, I try to get it loose, I don't have the right tools, so I try to improvise, and sure enough it slips and I bust my knuckles against the engine block. That was painful. Well, I jump in the car after getting the new sensor installed, try to start it up, the same problem is still there. I stop myself, and I say, hey, let me go back to that YouTube video. And I watch it, and sure enough, that sensor has a twin that's located about four inches off to the side. Redo it, start the car up, and everything's working fine. You have to pay attention, you have to follow the rules. <laughs> May we always remember that our God is holy. And let us approach him with hearts filled with reverence, obedience, and love. In closing, let us take a moment to meditate on the significance of the ark in our lives and how we can honor God's presence in all that we do. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the rules that you set down for us. 
please guide us so that we follow them correctly, that we do not fall from your grace. We love you, Lord, and we pray each and every day that you will continue to set forth rules that will guide us closer to your holiness. Amen.
true God, accept our gifts, gifts of our lives, our souls, and our treasure. Multiply and bless these gifts and consecrate them to the praise of your glory. Amen. So we probably should have done this last week, but we didn't. So we are going to, I, I want us to look around at everybody that is participating in Camp Joy. So if you have made a sandwich last week or will be making sandwiches this week, will you please stand? If you have made breakfast, please stand for the campers. If you have sorted lumber, run around delivering lumber, helped a team troubleshoot a problem on a site, will you please stand? If you will be coming as campers to camp this coming week, will you please stand? We have quite a few of our campers. I'm guessing they're packing right now. So literally every single one of them are not here with the exception of two of the adults. <laughs> so um, when I talk to Brady, <laughs> So, and then I want to ask, how many of you have been praying for Camp Joy and that ministry? Will you please stand? In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus tells us to go and make disciples. In the Gospel of Mark, Jesus calls us to go and tell the good news to everyone, everywhere. In the Gospel of Luke, Jesus promises to send the Holy Spirit to be with us. And in the Gospel of John, Jesus says, As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. Camp Joy is a mission ministry of this church and has been a mission ministry since 1990. That is amazing that this mission ministry has continued for over 30 years. You've had changes in pastoral leadership, you've had changes in lay leadership, there have been changes in the church, but this mission ministry has continued and it is a much needed mission in our area. What is a mission when I say that? It's a sending forth of people to serve God, God sends us on a mission. What is a commission? It's granting authority and allowing us to act on behalf of another. So God commissions us to go. As a team and as individuals, as a church, as a community of faith, we are sent forth by God to a specific service. We are sent with a commission from God to go and act on God's behalf. We demonstrate God, God's teachings, Christ's teachings, by loving one another. If you had been at the Vesper service Friday night, you would have been bowled over by the work that God did through the teams that were there this week. I had tears streaming down my face about three quarters of the way into the testimonies and it just kept flowing. You see, it's more than repairing homes. It is indeed changing lives. We have homeowners that connections are made with the teams. And it's not just the homeowners' lives that are made warmer and safer and drier. It's the lives of both the homeowner and the teams that are changed by God's love in this mission. So 
So I want to play, pray a blessing upon all who serve through this mission ministry. Will you pray with me? Guiding and loving God, empower these folks to continue to be your hands and feet. Help them glorify you by serving others. Send them into the world to feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, and warm those who are cold. By their actions and words, make them witnesses of your great love and your passion for rescuing your people. Protect them, teach them, and support them as they become the people you want them to be. Fill them with the Holy Spirit and enable them to complete their tasks faithfully and joyfully. Bring them home safely and let their experiences further enrich those of us on the periphery so that we too may glorify you by sharing the love of Christ. Give this team strength, wisdom, and love to work for you as they serve. Amen. Amen. Next Sunday, our team will be bringing the message. They'll be sharing their testimony of the week that will unfold. And we have no idea what that's going to look like. I know that we heard testimony this past week from other teams that shared their lunches with homeowners and had conversation. And we have one dear homeowner who has really not much, the bare minimum to survive. And she was chatting with the three youth that were on that site and wanted to know more about them. So they were engaging in conversation, having no idea that on Friday, she would present them each with a little something, a token of her appreciation. One of the young men is interested in rocks. He's fascinated by them. And she had found these geodes, these different quartz rocks that she gifted to him. Another um, liked to play card games. And she had a vintage Jeff Gordon card deck that she gifted him. And the third young man was very musically gifted and interested in instruments. And from somewhere, she pulled a Native American flute, handcrafted little flute, and gifted that to him. So you see, it wasn't, it, was making her home warmer and drier important? It was. But there was so much more that happened on that site. In that relationship building, where God was there, and the love of God, and the glory of God was evident. So I look forward to what this next week brings, because it's just pretty daggone amazing in the midst of Camp Joy. With that, I'd like us to remember we're going to move into our intercessory prayers where we pray for, for the people, right? So I would ask that we continue to pray for the Camp Joy teams. It is going to be very hot this week. We're going to be in the upper 90s. <coughs> I would ask that you continue to pray for the homeowners. I would ask for prayers for the victims of gun violence. We've seen more of that this week. And the first responders. I ask for prayers for April Davis and Angela Shoemaker. for Abbey Creek. Prayers for our sister churches in the cooperative parish, um, Piney Plains that has a beloved member who is nearing the end of his life here on earth. 
So we lift that community and, the, and Randy and his family. We lift Pastor Jean and Polly as they travel this week for travel mercies. We lift a joy, our bishop, Bishop Easterling, we were just notified on Friday that she will serve as our lead Episcopal servant for another four years with us, so that is a great joy. What are our other joys or concerns that we lift this morning? You guys are quiet. All right, Anna. Um, a week after Camp Joy, we're getting married uh, at Camp Harmonson. So, very busy two weeks ahead, but you know, that's exciting. We pray many, many, many blessings on your life together. <laughs> ben? What a joy there is in new life. Other concerns, other joys. Lynn's always is doing better after surgery. Lynn's doing better after his surgery. It's been a little bit of a slow recovery, but he's coming along. Donna? Uh, Roger came home yesterday. Roger came home yesterday. Linda? So we lift Bill as he goes in for another surgery, and Casey, as you care for him. Karen? Um, my husband George is doing fine. I've just been to listen and he writes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, and then my brother Marshall has cancer, and he's very close to dying. So Karen, we lift your family as George still a little stubborn about following doctor's orders and Karen's orders. And we lift your brother Marshall. Chris and Cheryl Deal. Brady. So you had a really cool birthday party yesterday. And today is Brady's actual birthday. So we give God praise for you. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we just give you praise and we thank you. We thank you for your blessings. We thank you for travel mercies. We thank you for healing. We thank you for protection. God, you know the needs that we've lifted today, the names that we have lifted. We pray for healing, be it in body, mind, or spirit. We pray for comfort and peace. God, we pray for peace and the end to violence. We give you thanks. For the gifts of today, and the gifts that will be revealed in this week to come. And together as disciples, 
we pray in the words that Jesus gave the very first disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We have a handful of announcements today before we sing our closing song. The first is our prayer walks that we're doing on Tuesday nights. We will not have a prayer walk this Tuesday. Um, we tried to do it last week while still doing Camp Joy, and it just it just didn't work. So we'll resume on the 23rd. We'll meet at 6 o'clock on the 23rd in the parking lot. This week, we do have table worship on Thursday at noon in the upper room. And I believe we're going to be talking about storytelling and listening. So it's not just the talking, right? Okay. So that's this Thursday at noon. <coughs> And then um, for Camp Joy, tonight we will be doing taco dinner at the camp for the, for the campers. Christy, do you need help with serving or anything, or are we good on that? We're good on that, okay. We do need more ice. We went through a whole, we went through 100 bags of ice last week. So um, what we had thought we would need for two weeks, we went through most of it the first week. So we are in need of another 36 bags of ice. We are getting ice from AC&T. So if you would like to donate for ice, you can either go out to AC&T and tell them it's for Camp Joy and buy a few bags, pay for a few bags, and it'll be picked up throughout the week. Or if you want to, um, Get with me after church we can figure out another way if that's if that doesn't work and then the other thing that we need that I promised the breakfast crew from the first week that I would ask for and kind of I just it didn't happen the first week um, we need metal coffee cans um, for bacon grease in the kitchen to drain it so we've got plastic ones but not metal ones so if anybody has metal coffee cans that are empty, if you can let me know, we would appreciate that greatly. Um, our next announcement is Hancock Helping Hands. We're still collecting the dish soap for that event that is in August, so if you're at the dollar store or grocery store, just grab an extra bottle of dish soap, okay? And then an update on our capital funds campaign. In the month of June, we, st we started with seed money of about $6,000, and then we had some other memorials come in, so we are sitting right now at $7,200. Um, our first target is $3,700, or $37,000 for the roof on the parsonage. So if you are able to give a little extra each week, or maybe a one-time um, gift for the building fund, that would be greatly appreciated. And our next, the, our next announcement I'm really excited about. So in August, we're gonna be doing an alternative to VBS. This is intergenerational celebrating. We're gonna be breaking bread together. We're gonna have a meal together. We're gonna pray together. We're gonna play together. We're gonna worship together. So um, it'll be on Wednesday evenings at 6.30. So it's like, VBS for all, everybody, for, for, for littles, bigs, and in-betweens. And with that, let's stand and sing our closing song. The words are on the screen.
children of God, celebrate the life you have been given. Live your life with all your might as a dance to God's glory. Live to praise God each and every day. Go now in peace to love and serve one another. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and all God's people say, Amen. Amen.